Are my standards higher than everyone else's? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we're going to be talking about high standards, which are a construct created by and through your values. Now, before we jump in, I am drinking a tea today. This is a tea that I got in Croatia here locally. It is Mayweed. So I think it tastes a lot like chamomile, chamomile, but it's really, really good and highly recommend. So delicious. I actually put about a teaspoon. Well, no, that's that's too much. I put like a demi teaspoon, demi two, demi spoon, demi teaspoon of honey. Super, super delicious. So the reason I wanted to have this conversation and I have my notes here for you guys is because, you know, we always talk in my community about cheating and relationships and standards. And I always get this feedback from my community or people around me that always kind of throws me (laughs) a little bit. And the feedback is, Brittany, your standards are too high or very high, or Brittany has high standards. And that is very hard for me to process because usually it coincides with things like cheating, so breaking your partner's consent. And again, when people tell me like, Brittany, you have high standards when it comes to cheating, you're kind of saying like, oh, you have high standards when it comes to breaking your partner's consent. But to me, I just have like basic standards. I have normal standards. At least in my bubble where I was raised, you didn't cheat on your partner. That was, it's pretty uncommon to do that. Now, of course, everyone's bubble is different. I come from a religious Catholic background and I called my brother today, my little brother. He's married, has four kids, and I love his relationship. I love my sister-in-law, and their relationship is very different than mine. So I wanted to use his relationship in contrast to my relationship to talk about those standards. Now, when I asked him, do you think you have high standards? Do you think I have high standards? He would say, well, he has standards based off Catholicism, and I have standards based off of how I feel in the moment. Now, that's sort of true. I'm a secularist. I left the Catholic Church a while ago when I was like 19. I'm 34. So obviously my... My 20s was an adventure of me gaining those standards and having those standards. And in my 20s, I definitely dated not with a standard in mind. I had an idea. I had consent sort of in my mind. I had, you know, I wanted honesty and transparency. But to be honest with you, I allowed people to lie to me. And I I went back to a cheater and I tried to make it work and I tried to seek out counseling and I tried to make things work even though values, even though I felt like I was betraying some part of myself. But Again, in my 20s, because I was trying to figure out what my values were, it was much harder to stand up for myself. Now that I know what my values are, it's much easier to stand up for myself and say, like, actually, I'm not going to put up with that. So what does it mean to have high high standards? What does it mean to say, I'm not going to put up with that? And when do you when do you come to a point in a relationship where you're sort of like giving up? right? Because something bad happened. These are all like the questions I think about when I think about what is a standard, right? So, okay, so I call my brother. And he, okay, this is very interesting because, again, different bubbles. Even though I was raised Catholic, like, girl, I left the church so long ago that the it's just such a different different world to me now. I'll give an example just before we get into it and compare our lists. Cheating to him and his relationship also includes looking at porn. So you can imagine from my perspective as a secularist and a sex worker, that is so different. And even though I was raised Catholic and I know that that's true in that bubble, I also forget that like that is true. Now it's on a spectrum. So like watching porn is a version of cheating, but it's not the same as infidelity in relation to involving somebody else physically, right? And in their relationship, like there is no divorce. There's only separation. So they don't believe in divorce. And to get an annulment through the Catholic church, you would need very specific standards met. Versus in my relationship, cheating falls under abuse, but doesn't include watching porn. I'm a sex worker. My partner's pro-sex work. So obviously, I don't mind if he watches porn. He doesn't mind if I watch porn. So it's not cheating to us in our relationship. But you know what is? Confiding in someone else intimately. We actually find it to be more cheating. And if I sought out a friend of mine and told them about my marriage and and it's like looked to them for comfort versus my partner. So like funny enough in our relationship, it's like, it's not the porn that's cheating. It's more like the betrayal that's cheating in my brother's relationship. It's the betrayal, but it's also the lack of quote unquote, what he would call dignity in the relationship. So just keep in mind as we're going along, I'm not trying to make a prescription for you. I'm just trying to make it clear to you that I have values and standards and I hold them in high regard, but I'm, I don't really identify as somebody with high standards. I identify as somebody with basic standards. And for me, basic standards is not betraying your partner and betrayal is something you've negotiated. So of course, I'm not going to have my partner read my mind. 
I'm not going to read his. We are going to come to this agreement where we've negotiated. And that way when we do an action and we know the like the level of betrayal we're engaging in. So again, if him and I cheated, it would mean so many other things went wrong, right? Like layer after layer after layer of betrayal would have had to occur for cheating to occur. So I think for other people when they imagine cheating, maybe you're at a different stage in your relationship. It doesn't feel like that big of a deal. But again, in order for him and I to engage in that, we would have to be very malicious, awful people. We couldn't engage in cheating accidentally. There is just no way that could happen, right? So again, maybe in your situation, it could accidentally happen, but in ours, like that's not possible. So, okay, let's go through a checklist that I made with my brother's relationship versus my relationship, just to give you guys an idea of what standards come to mind or values or how I think about these things. Because again, your life is your life and my life is mine. This is just how I do my relationship. And again, if you're looking for long-term cohabitation, cohabitation, if you're looking for poly or monogamous, if you're just looking for a trustworthy relationship, this is how I modeled mine. And one of the key values in this relationship is like honesty and transparency. So we don't lie to one another. We tell each other everything and we've made a lifelong commitment to each other. And outside of abuse, we're not interested in divorce. So that's the model for my relationship. Okay. So I wrote down, I'm going to give you very basic examples. You can use these examples by reflecting in your current relationship or if you're in the dating stage, the relationship you are possibly like the person you're dating currently. So I said, as an example, I for okay, this is really hard to explain. Actually, I'll put a little thing up on the screen. Okay, so for me, one of the main requirements I had in a partner is that they were human. Gender didn't matter to me and still doesn't. And gender for me, when I think about it, is like non-binary, gender fluid, male, female. So kind of on that basis is what I think about gender. For my farm brother, gender means female, cis woman. So in terms of like picking a partner, one of the ways you can find the right person is by eliminating everyone else you're definitely not interested in. So like my brother's straight. He's not interested in men. I'm pansexual. I'm interested in people adult people and technically over the age of, uh, for me, I prefer someone in between five years. So above the age of like, well, how old was I? 33. So above the age of like 28 ish is kind of perfect for me. 27, 28 is kind of the youngest I think I'd engage with at that time. I'm 34 now, but you know, within a five year span of kind of where I am right now, if I was older, maybe it would change. Um, but for Brittany, like I want to be as close to my partner in age as I can be just so we have, you know, some sort of overlap generationally for my brother. I think similarly, he was looking for somebody who he shared a lot of just timelines with. So him and his wife are about a year apart. And so for him, I think same thing. We just want to look for people within a proper age group. It's not that we're opposed to go a little like a stretch the age. It's just that preferably, preferably. Okay. Um, beliefs. I'm an atheist. So I was looking for someone who's atheist agnostic, somebody who doesn't believe in a God, somebody who's okay with the idea of thinking there could be a God, but not somebody who literally believes there's a God. Like I was not interested in a partner who thought there was a higher being or spoke with language that indicated a higher being. Uh, I think both my partner and I are on the same page in that regard. We don't believe in higher beings. We don't think there's somebody looking over us or watching us. We don't believe there's someone you can pray to. We don't believe there's anything like magical or great out there necessarily. Of course, we're open to being wrong, but I don't think we believe in that. Unlike my brother, who's Catholic, so his wife needed to be a Catholic and believe in Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church. The next thing is going to coincide with values in regards to like subcategories, things like pro-LGBT. So I needed my partner to be pro-LGBT. I'm queer and I needed my partner to be able to see that queerness within me, right? These are all part of standards because also on top of that, my partner has to be pro-LGBT in case we have LGBT kids or he needs to be pro-LGBT because considering all the civil rights violations that are happening around the world right now, I want to make sure that we in our household speak highly and favoritively towards human rights, right? And so that involves LGBT people. For my brother and his wife, they actually wanted to make sure that they met a Catholic who didn't believe in the pro-LGBT quote-unquote agenda. They wanted to make sure that they were Catholic in belief through and through. So both him and his wife had the standard of being with somebody that was basically anti-LGBT, right? According to the Catholic religion. 
uh, something that coincides with that is like sex work, right? Like I'm pro sex work. My partner's married to a sex worker. That's me. My brother is Catholic. Him and his wife consider watching porn cheating, but not to the same extent as like physical cheating. And so for them, they want to find somebody that is anti sex work, that thinks sex work is not dignified, that thinks people who engage in sex work aren't having the most fulfilling relationship with their spouses they could be having. For my um, brother and his wife, like intimately cuddling with somebody else would be a huge violation. And to be fair, I think even within my relationship, intimately cuddling with people where, you know, our legs are intertwined and my breasts are pushed up against them is also technically a violation of our monogamy. But for different reasons, them through Christ and us through uh, commitment and monogamy, right? Moving forward, we both, funny enough, have a standard of our partners being a certain level of introspective. So both my brother and I, though we're different and come from different bubbles and do different things and like, or I should say live in different bubbles since technically we were raised in the same bubble, but we, you know, currently reside in different bubbles. I would say that I needed my partner to be a certain level of introspective. My brother needed his wife to be a certain level of introspective and she needed him to be a certain level of introspective. And my partner needed me to be a certain level of introspective. And then the question is, what level of introspection is that? Because of course I've gone on so many dates with so many wonderful people, but what kind of conversations are we having? What kind of discourse is occurring? What kind of conversations around the dinner table are happening without people's feelings getting offended? How deep can we go? How honest can we be? For us, that's going to be different. For me, I needed a partner that could bubble hop and be introspective and question himself and the beliefs he was taught. And for my sister-in-law, my brother, I think they were looking for somebody who was very introspective in relation to them and their relationship with God or Catholicism. You know, my family is very philosophy-based. We're very into discussion. We like politics. We like discourse. As children, my parents would engage with us and ask us, what do you think about this? Or here's a passage in the Bible. What do you think? think about this. I was not raised in a home where like children are meant to be seen, not heard. No, no, no. I was raised in a home that, that though it was clear who was in charge, they valued the opinions of young people in regard. Well, I think they mostly valued hearing their ideas regurgitated back to them through their kids, but they allowed us to explore. My parents allowed us to ask questions. And I, I see that in the way my brother's raising his kids. He wants his kids to be curious and ask questions in hopes that they'll be more Catholic and I think for me and my partner, it's more like we want to ask more questions to find capital T truth, whatever that means, right? So again, there's still a desire, a standard to have introspection and within the relationship, but you see how they end up looking different and the why is different. So remember when you say like, I want an introspective partner, what are you really saying? And then do you really have like high standards or do you just have your standards or do you just value your standards? I hold my standard in high regard, which to some people conveys high standards, but I just think it's so funny to me when people tell me like, Brittany, you have such high standards when it comes to relationships. And I'm like, huh? What does that mean? Are you guys saying you're okay with your partner violating your consent? Because that seems like a weird place to be in in a relationship and yes maybe there's like some violations of minor consent here and there like oh I wanted him to get me milk but he got me chocolate milk and I guess that's a violation of consent but for Brittany like that would be kind of like not important though it could be important if I explicitly said can you please get me milk and he got me chocolate milk and maybe I'd feel betrayed I just feel like we're playing weird hoop games cheating is in my bubble pretty typically looked down upon so the idea that I have a high standard for cheating, which is please don't cheat on me, seems really weird. Like I feel like I'm being gaslit by the world unless the world is telling me like they're all liars and cheaters, which is very interesting. And if that's the case, like I don't have a high standard. I just think you guys don't have any or you have low standards, but that's not the same, right? I think it's okay to be in a relationship where you say out loud, I'm okay being cheated on. But I also think that it indicates like a lot of trauma and a lot of issues. It could maybe not. But again, being cheated on means you asked your partner explicitly not to do with something and they did it anyways. Like, do you understand? Like when I say cheating, I mean, you explicitly sat down with your partner and said, please don't do this. And you or your partner did it anyways. Yeah. Okay. Kind of sociopathic, right? Kind of crazy to like. Look at your partner in the eye, say, I'm not going to do this to you, and then you do it to them. Okay? Okay. I feel like I'm living in a crazy land when people are like, Brittany, that's a high standard. Is that a high standard to ask your adult partner who says they're smart and competent not to do something they said they wouldn't? Again, I'm trying to be open-minded here. Just 
feels disingenuous when people tell me that's a high standard, right? Okay. So, and I don't mean to point fingers at anyone who's ever said that to me. I just think it's not, it doesn't make sense, right? Okay. Um, so another example is like, I have a standard of health. I need my partner to be a certain level of healthy and keep their body a certain level of fit, but I'm actually open to chubby and my brother isn't. My brother and his wife do not want to be chubby. They don't even want to hold any extra weight. They want to be perfectly within like a healthy weight limit, but like specifically like not even chubby. I like a chubby chunkster. Like I'm good with it. I'm open to anyone who holds some extra weight. Sometimes I put on extra weight. I'm okay with that. Um, My partner and I are both in the same boat where we're like very open to a little bit of chub. But you know, obviously like, yes, we'd love to wake up and always be super in shape, but like that's not our lifestyle, girls. So Again, it's interesting when you're getting married and you have this idea of like, my partner wants me to be in shape all the time. Well, if you have a couple who both agree on that value, it's not that big of a deal. Some people would say, oh, your standards are too high if you want me to be in shape 24-7. But for some partners, that's just their lifestyle. So I don't have that standard. And to be fair, neither does my brother and his my sister-in-law, because to be fair, like she's pushing out babies every year and a half. So you know, even though she's one of those women who like literally does not gain weight when she's pregnant, it's insane. She doesn't put too much pressure on herself of always getting into perfect shape all the time because she's obviously having babies. And my brother agrees. If you're pushing out babies every two years, like you're not, your ability to be perfectly in shape is not going to be a thing, but they tried their best to maintain a certain amount of health. Okay. Um, another example is like lifestyle standards. Like someone might say, Oh, like, oh, you have such a high standard when it comes to living because you don't want to live in a house that's like hoarding. Is that a high standard or is that just like aiming for some sort of health? I watched the Minimalist podcast and they were saying so many Americans are hoarders. Now on the five, I think there's five uh, levels to the hoarding scale. I think they said most Americans are one or two. And I thought that was really interesting to think about the idea that even lifestyle, like I don't want to live as a hoarder. I already know I have many, many, many hoarder tendencies and I tend to, you know, be those people who keep everything thinking I'll use it later, but I just don't want to be that person. I want to get rid of, get rid of, get rid of, give it to somebody else to use it. And I want my partner to coincide with that. One part of our lifestyle that I think matches so perfectly is like, we're both kind of like in our introverted, like isolation phase. We're like, "Mm." that's, I mean, that's how we've, he's been most of his life. But for me, And my 20s were so social. My teens were so social. And I'm just like, I'm ready to settle down for a bit. I think I'll be more social again in my 40s maybe. But as of right now, I'd like to go into like hibernation mode. I like staying in my house. Like literally, I was going through my DMs to see how long it had been since I had like talked to some of my friends. And it's been like a month. But for me, it feels like two days. So time is really warped for me. I feel like I have so much time during the day right now. I'm so happy. Things are such a vibe. It feels like I have... Just like I've been having the greatest last, especially last like few days. I'm just like, I'm so joyful. But a big part of that is because, you know, things are settling. I'm moving into like a schedule. I've got like a vibe going on. But also my partner and I, we complement each other's lifestyles. If my partner was doing very different things for me, if he was in a very different lifestyle than me, I think it'd be much harder. Same with my farm brother and his wife. Like they have, you know, 20 acres. They live in the country. They have a Catholic community. They homeschool their kids. They they love like their pastime is like sitting on the porch, drinking tea and like smoking a cigar and like watching the kids. Super cute. It's like that's the vibe. But Let's say they were in a relationship where um, like her mom loves to ride horses and her mom rides international, like horses internationally. Like she'll travel all over the world to do like trails with horses. Like my brother could not marry somebody who was like away from him doing major trips. But my sister-in-law is a homebody. She doesn't want to leave the home. She wants to be with her kids and her husband. So, you know, when you think about lifestyle, you have to think, what are the values we're putting on? The value of being near each other, saying, I want to spend time with you. Again, standards are about you. They're a construct based off of your needs. They're not about, I'm better than other people. We're not here to say like, oh, I'm better than you. My standards are higher. For some people, they would be like, Brittany, your standards are so low. You don't have a six pack. And I'm like, I know. Or Brittany, your standards are so low. You're not making a million dollars. It's like, yeah, I know. But these are different standards put on are created by either your culture, your bubble, your belief system, you. So again, when you're talking about your standards are too high, you're really, you're not saying what I think you mean to say. I think you mean to say my standards are different. 
and Britney standards are Britney standards, but they're not really higher than your standards. They're just different. And I do want to stick to my standards to the best of my ability. One of the things my brother challenged me on is he said like, oh, I think you changed though, because I felt like your standard was that you wanted a partner who had the same career drive as you. And I was like, actually, I think I misunderstood what I really wanted. What I think I wanted was somebody who didn't make me feel like they were taking advantage of me because I've always made more money than my partners, which is not a big deal. But I've always had partners that either took advantage of that or hated me for it or didn't want to help out at the house or didn't want to be stay at home partners or didn't want to contribute to the home. And so I think it's different now. I'm not concerned that my partner isn't as career driven because like not everybody is, right? But he is very driven to be the best partner in this relationship. He makes the team win. Without him, the team wouldn't win. Without my sister-in-law, the team wouldn't win. My sister-in-law doesn't have a job. But my brother wouldn't say, oh, like, her like having not having a job is like lowering my standards again it's not about our partners having jobs it's about our partners having a job at home that is a job it just doesn't make technically money but it saves you a lot of money on child care cleaning ladies or men you know people are coming in to you know help with household chores so again I think in the past like in my 20s I was thinking like I need a partner who like has a career is career driven like I am I needed a partner that was going to make the team win and wasn't going to hold it against me for making money. And I found that. I found a partner that's 100% present, 100% engaged, 100% dedicated to this and committed to this relationship and wants to see the team win and doesn't resent me and loves his life and I love my life. And together we make like a power couple in a different way. I think there's the power couples like Jay-Z and Beyonce. But then I think there's the other kind of power couple, which is like two people in a relationship who make the team win. And that's what I kind of consider that I have. So in that way, you could say the standard is higher. And if you're in a relationship where your partner and you are, are always like bickering or fighting or not getting along, sure. But in my relationship, like it definitely feels like I'm in this like little power couple that's just operating differently, right? So everyone have your own standard. Don't compare it to mine. I don't have a high standard. I just have a standard, right? I love the idea of saying to oneself, I have a very high standard. But again, sometimes I think this high standard does come from a place of competing with somebody that doesn't even exist. You know, we just watched this Abba and Preach video um, and I'll post it later in the week for you guys. But we just watched it and he was talking about how he's not very ambitious. And I feel like what he's really saying is like, I'm not in competition with everyone else or what they're doing. I'm in competition with myself because that's how I feel. Like I as a Britney really feel like the only person I'm in competition with is myself. I'm not sitting here and comparing my relationships to other people. I'm not holding myself to other people's standards. Again, if I held myself to the same standard as my brother, who by the way, when I asked him if he had high standards, he said, no, I have normal standards. Which to him, he said, in comparison to society, might feel like higher standards, but society is just failing itself. So it's not higher standards. It's just standards, right? Um, in comparison to my brother's standards, if I tried to meet his standards or his wife's, like I would fail. Because again, I, would, I wouldn't be allowed to be a secularist. I wouldn't be allowed to be a sex worker. I wouldn't be allowed to be queer. I wouldn't be allowed to be myself. But again... When you're creating your standard, you're creating it for yourself. Talk about the ultimate bubble. You're creating a world that reflects your standard and value. I, Brittany, value the relationship I've built with my partner. It is like the best thing that's ever happened. You guys know I brag about it all the time. It's hard not to feel like you, you know, it's hard not to be grateful when you've worked so hard to battle so many struggles, to meet so many standards that I always failed, only to realize like everybody else's standards was for them and I should never have adapted them into my into my life. So much of my life from being a very young child until 30 was me realizing how much I was so afraid of not, not living to other people's standards. Even with my YouTube career, often people will say like, oh, unless you're like a millionaire, you're not really successful in YouTube. But nobody would look at a teacher and think unless you're making $200,000 a year, you're not successful as a teacher. Everyone accepts that in teaching or in other lifestyles, you'll make a certain amount of money and it doesn't mean a million dollars. But YouTube, for some reason, is one of those careers where a lot of people feel like you're not successful unless you're one of the rich YouTubers. But I would argue middle class YouTube life is pretty good. Like I'm pretty grateful about it. I'm pretty good with it. I think it's pretty nice. And again, it'd always be nice to make more money. 
But to say that I'm not successful when the only goal of success I ever had was doing it full time, that was always ultimately my dream. I think I internalized in my mid 20s that, oh, I was never going to be good at my job unless I was like a millionaire. But I think the goal I hit just a few years ago of doing it full time for real, real, like quitting my job and being pretty confident about that, like I have no doubt that I'll ever have to go back to regular work. Now, there's a possibility always I could get kicked off YouTube, right? But as of right now, I am so confident. And I think that confidence comes from me meeting my own standard. Even today, I needed to recoup my spoons. I was going to stream, but I realized like I had a pretty, you know, interesting day, went really good, but I was like really low on spoons. Um, A part of it is like health stuff. A part of it is just other things. And I'm like, okay, how do I best serve Brittany to her standard? And the standard is treat myself well. I just said this on a live show the other day. A slow and steady wins the race for Brittany. Working 20 hours a day, like hustling to my breaking point, that's not going to be my success. That's not going to be my standard. So I put out a little tweet for you guys. I said, hey, I'm going to work on the podcast and prioritize that, but I will be back tomorrow for a live stream. And, you know, I doubted myself for a moment as I was conversing with myself, like, is this the right decision? Should I push myself? And I said, no, like I'm reaching my standard by putting out content, dedicating that time to other things. And now I'm excited because I got to take a break from the stream, which was great. So I could focus on this, which was important, right? Now I get to edit the podcast and have that going. My calls are tomorrow. I'm going to edit another video for Friday. It like puts me in order and I'm still meeting my standards, which is making sure that I don't overdo it. I don't want to burn out. I want to make sure that I remain steady by acknowledging as a chronically ill person that I might wake up some days and not be able to do everything, but I can do something. And so today I couldn't do everything, but I did something. And that's good enough, right? That was one of the radical parts of accepting my chronic health this last year, like this chronic illness, like accepting fibro into my life meant waking up every day and wondering if like, Are we going to have it today? And I feel pretty good about the decision I made. I'm glad I made it. Like, I think, I hope that shows through my energy now, because right now it's 9.45 PM. I would have been almost two hours into my live stream if I, if I, um, decided to stream tonight, but then when would I have done the podcast? Just because of the way the day went today, it was one of those things where, oh, I had to like pick and choose and make a decision. And I'm so glad I got to relax, eat healthy food, do my exercises, do whatever I needed to do, talk to my partner, talk to my brother, do research for the podcast. And now I'm finally filming. But like I said, technically at this time of night, I'd be almost two hours into my live show. But I picked and prioritized something else, which was this podcast which to meet my standard of podcasts, I would have had to have done. If I didn't do that, I would have rushed the podcast. I would have stressed out. I wouldn't have had a chance to talk to my brother and have good conversation to bring into this podcast. I wouldn't have been able to confirm what I thought about his relationship to make sure I'm conveying the right information to you. The point is that sometimes your standards, first, don't have to be met perfectly. And two, don't always look the same. I don't want to moralize my standards. I don't want to make a prescription to you. I don't want you to watch my content and think, Brittany's saying, this is how I should live. I'm saying you should be kind and considerate and thoughtful. I'm saying at best, try not to betray your partners. And I'm saying at best, value their consent. And if that's asking too much of you, okay, then It's asking too much of you and you can make a decision if that's a time in your life where you need to self-reflect and be more introspective or if you need to double down and decide this is your standard. And then I want you to be honest in relationships and say that, say, well, you're dating someone. Hey, just so you know, I'm going to break your consent and I'm going to betray you because at least they know what they're signing up for. If you could do just that, I think I'd think better of you. If you could be a person who got into a relationship and said, hey, Uh, I'm not very loyal. I'm going to lie to you. I'm going to betray you. I'm going to do it again and again and again. Even though I'm going to tell you I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it. I think I could be like, okay, cool. We're all good. And then we could tell people like, hey, like this is like, this is their value. But I'm not trying to say you have to live my way. But again, if I had any wish for society, if I could make a prescription, it would be that we didn't lie and betray our partners and violate their consent. But again, I keep getting told this is a high standard. So I'm 
just very confused on how that is a high standard, <laughs> you know, when it just feels like a standard. Don't you think that's kind of weird? Am I crazy? Like, I feel like it's really strange that I keep getting told that's a high standard. Yeah. I would love to know your comments, please, in the sections down below. Tell me what I am missing. Because again, I think I'm asking for the basics. But again, it's just for me. You don't have to adapt my standard into your life, right? But I would still love to hear your responses of why do you think I'm being told these are high standards when to me they're just basic. And again, like my brother said, we all have standards. And for him and I, we hold them in high regard, but you don't have to, right? Okay, guys, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I hope this was interesting. Leave suggestions for future podcasts in the comment sections down below. I very much want to make content that you want to listen to. So please let me know. I already have so many ideas, but I would just love to overlap them with what you guys are curious about. So please let me know. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.